Hey, Yuhani. Nice to have you here. Um, hey. It's been a long time, man. Like, uh, yeah. we haven't seen each other for how long now? Almost a year soon. That's Almost like... Almost a year. I moved from Canada in March, so... So, you're back in Finland right now? Yes. You lived here, worked with me at the same studio? Yeah. Um, you just left before shit hit the fan? Yes, that was right when shit hit the fan. Like two days after everything, the world world closed and we flew home. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. So yeah, it's uh, it's really nice to talk to you again. Um, you're Likewise, really a person I like to talk with and uh, to be around you was always uh, great fun. And uh, I also back then we had the trip to Montreal. Uh, yeah, to we one. had some good times. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that. And so it's really a pleasure to talk to you again and have you here as my second guest. Um, yeah, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So maybe we first off, we start. Um, you can talk about yourself a bit and yep. um, how you started becoming a, like, become a concept artist, how you got into the industry. Um, all that can say yeah. something about that yeah well i started a long time ago it feels like <laughs> i've been in this industry for something like 12 years now i lost count i started when i was 18 just working freelance for small finnish game studios and then landed my first uh, full-time gig when i was 19 uh, in this small finnish company called frozen bite and then i spent a couple of years there on which Did project I... were you working there just to... uh these trying platformer games yeah. that were pretty pretty well known back then uh, these indie yeah, indie it was hits fun. It looked nice. yeah it was super fun projects to work on because we had this small team that was super dedicated to making them look as as good as we could there was like big you know what and all about the art so that was really fun to get my start in the industry there yeah but from there i moved to ubisoft which had a studio in helsinki and i spent quite a few years there i think six ish and then uh, obviously moved to quebec canada where i met you and spent the year there and after all that uh, now I'm working at Remedy back in Helsinki. Yeah, so you are there now for one year? Yeah, soon. It's crazy how quick it goes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when when you have a lot of stuff to do and you're quite busy, and for you it was really crazy because you moved in a short amount of time, stayed here not for so long and then you move back again and yeah i mean the four years almost that i've been here is uh, is flying by so fast um it's crazy yeah i was there only for a year so it went super fast at your old job um where you used to work um in the beginning like did you you started as a concept artist yeah first or right. did you do something else before uh no i started as a concept artist right away they were looking for someone with frozen by two they didn't have anyone that did straight up 2d stuff at that time but it was i was wearing many hats i did all the marketing art as well and and some ui stuff and and a lot of concepting so it was a good, a good place to learn learn the ropes so that was also the time where you mm, i think learned for yourself as well to become better in your profession and um, yeah i spent a lot of time doing personal work back then uh, as well as today as well i still do personal work i think it's important because you can do anything you want and and learn anything you want and it's not necessarily 
dependent on what you need to do at work. True. So yeah, when you were there and you learned and you know figured out somehow to to be a good concept artist within the studio. Did you you said you learned for yourself also all the time in the meanwhile? Um, what did you do? Like, what was what kind of resource would you recommend to somebody um, who's trying to pursue our career and wants to learn concept art, becoming well, a concept artist? Or the back then it was a ten, it was almost ten years ago or something like that. Crazy how quickly time goes, but there wasn't any of these great resources that that we have now. There's conceptart.org forums and Sijun forums and that stuff, but that's really old school. And you had to you had to dig through the forums and try, try to find out how your favorite artists did what they did. And there was nothing. Now you can just go come road and get tutorials from anyone pretty much that you like. And and that's that's so much better these days. So yeah, I think it's just yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say that that. These days, if if I was gonna start now, it would be maybe a bit easier to find the nuts and bolts and how to put these things together than back in the day. Yeah, when we started, I think um, maybe it was also your your same gen generation as I am. Um, we started learning through Gnomon, uh yeah. videos, workshops, and the for me the back then the DVDs were. Uh, you know quite pricey so it was not too yeah. easy to to get those yeah it wasn't i managed to get a couple of those like the good old feng Zhu ones and ryan church yes. dvds and those really really helped me get started yes that's true and you still like i tried to find something back then people used to go to libraries uh, maybe you as well Oh yeah, some then kids you have might the, not know the, what this and is. And then the brick of a book of 3ds Max or <laughs> oh my just... god, yeah, I remember this. Like my you first... could kill someone with those books and exactly, yeah. My first tutorials quite... were actually 3ds Max, uh, like at least 3D, and it was really a massive book. It was horrible. Yeah, I could never get into 3D back then. It was just too technical and too intimidating for me. I was and. I was too impatient. I just wanted to get something on screen way faster than 3D was 3D allowed back then. That has completely changed now. It's my workflow is 80 percent, yeah, 80 percent 3D now. If if it's something man-made, it might be 95 percent 3D now, and then just a little bit of Photoshop work afterwards. If it's something more organic then it's still still 2d more than 3d but even i can see that changing in the future hmm. how like what time are we talking about like at what time i think it was like 2007 or something 2008 yeah i started i got my first gig in 2008 yeah that was so it's been a while already 13 years almost so yeah it, the industry has changed quite a lot did you also um did you start it uh with an intuos uh back then as well did you bought a yeah a i begged my mother mother to buy me one <laughs> when i was 15 and and she eventually did and it was one of those super small into a tablet it was like a postage postage stamp but it got the job done nice yeah i think it was not so easy back then and especially um i remember when i was a student even getting the wacom was not so so easy yeah like the world they're little... still still expensive for for students but i guess they sell them in more places now and it's easier to buy one yes that's also what i mean like there were not so many places who were selling them. Some had yeah. them in, you know, some Apple stores, like or sp special stores back in Germany, yeah. who were selling Apple devices. 
and they mainly had those as well because most of the graphic designers would go to those places and those were the only ones who actually would use them for um, photo mani manipulation and stuff photographers and, and so on yeah so yeah that, that was also a big deal for, for us um, yeah so nowadays everybody can pretty much learn most of the things to the internet but do you think yeah. still that a school would be beneficial for somebody like for me yeah. I, I, I try to learn myself uh, or teach myself and try to look into everything and you know to become a better artist and or to become better in certain types of softwares but it was pretty hard to self-motivate like to to keep up doing it and i think uh, the atmosphere is quite different as well like if you are working with other schoolmates together um, working on a project and just being at school somewhere and yeah. working on something is quite different than if you are alone at home and especially when you're a youngster where you, know, yeah. you just start out um to have this motivation what do you think about that or like what are your thoughts well i personally i didn't go to any school for for this stuff i was supposed to study architecture but then i got employed in the games industry and never left uh, but definitely school can be useful for a lot of people because it's probably you get some structure for the learning which is always useful and then probably the biggest biggest one will be the friendships and connections you make at school i was kind of lucky back then i got employed so young that i kind of got my education while while i was working with like-minded people in the in the finnish indie game industry uh, nowadays i think the competition is much much more fierce and i'm not sure i would would get a job with the portfolio i had back then you know what i mean so that's where schools come in i, I see people accelerate their learning quite a bit in school but of course you have to consider the quite considerable cost of the schools as well especially in the states it's it can can be difficult yes like do you would you recommend it still nowadays to go to a school or would you tell somebody okay skip that part don't waste money on schools and there, there has been a lot of discussions around that topic yeah w what, are yeah, your, what are your thoughts would you still say okay just stick at home and try to find tutorials that suits you it's tough if it depends a lot on the individual for myself i wouldn't i wouldn't spend the money i would I would just study at home after work and on the weekends and uh, we'd like to. but at the same time some other person might really benefit from like two years of intensive you know a program somewhere even though if it, if it costs quite a bit you can when you when you're especially when you get a little older and if you want to switch careers you don't have all the time in the world like we did back in when we were younger just messing around for years you know learning this stuff so in that case a good school might really come in handy you know but it's a tough one because the schools are so expensive and then there's no guarantee that you get to the level that you need to be at uh, when you finish school so it's still demands a lot of individual work at home outside of school for you to get your portfolio to the level that it needs to be in. True. So I, I think you had also not so many opportunities, right? Or um, like options in Finland. I mean, no. it's a small country and where would you go? Where would be the next place where they yeah. would teach it? Was there something back then? No. And there isn't even today, there isn't anything that teaches art well, there is more 3D stuff, I guess, these days, but I don't think there's anything that focuses on, on concept design or 2D 
anything like that in Northern Europe, in Scandinavia. I don't know if there's anything even. Hmm. I don't know any of European schools that do that either. I guess there's some online schools, but yeah, there isn't that many. Yeah, the, like the issue we have, for instance, in Germany is that um, like most of the people are not um, not having the experience or the teachers themselves. Most of them, they never went to, you know, AAA production or never really worked or they don't have that much of experience if uh, years of experience like some people if you would go to i don't know like those hubs like la or yeah montreal like there are so many studios and the industry is really there so if somebody worked at um one of the big big studios if they teach um of course then it's 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 perfect right because you can learn from somebody from a professional who actually worked yeah. in the industry and was had his hands on AAA productions and exactly that was the issue in Germany at least for me because um, there was no school there was one school that started but y you know um, they tried to find teachers there but they couldn't and it also yeah. the location is also maybe an issue that uh, you know you don't you don't have so many people around that area to to teach these type of things and yeah. yeah and it just started back then yeah i think germany has a really similar situation to finland it, of course we also have like a fine arts education and graphic design and all that but it it's it's not di directly related into games no yeah for me it and was yeah and concept design no one knew what it was back then <laughs> so still people don't know like yeah. at least well i would say yeah in germany it's it's still not a um a thing like people yeah. would always ask you hey what is that what are you doing and then they keep yeah. asking you well you're playing games all day long <laughs> or if you yeah. if you say you're an artist um like all the time they 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 refer to You know, you're an artist who's not really making any money. You know, you're just you're just doing art for the sake of doing art and because it's passion, but you cannot really earn any you know, have any income with that. Yeah. But uh Well, it's kind of flipped in Finland <laughs> in the past five years because there's been these massive success stories in the mobile industry. So now people that don't maybe don't know so much about the industry and you tell them that you work in games they assume that you're making millions <laughs> which is of course not the case usually they but it's but if, if you would say you work for the industry the game industry now would they know yeah. or they make a lot yeah, they, of money they, or would they make yeah, fun they of do. it yeah they, they no they well i don't know about that but they are certainly aware of these big mobile gaming companies in Finland like Supercell and Rovio that that have been really successful in the in the last 10 years. They, they are well known household names in Finland now. Okay, that's why. Yeah. Well, like when I started out it was uh, funny because every time people would really think like that what I just have mentioned. Like Yeah. People would think, oh yeah, it's not something where the money is, and like, it's ridiculous because you know, if the government in Germany at least or in some other countries in Europe would, you know, support more the industry like other countries do, like look at the U.S. Uh, if I look here at Canada, you know, uh, specifically Quebec, like, yeah. There is so much talent here. There are so many studios because the government is really caring about um, yeah. that field, the industry. And that attracts, of course, a lot of studios, um, independent studios, the, the big ones. And yeah, of course, a lot of people move here. And yeah. so, yeah, if they would do the same uh in more in europe then it 
could be quite beneficial in general uh, for the yeah. economy. Like I think last time or the year before, it was the first time actually that some politicians showed up at the Gamescom in Germany, and yeah, even the chancellor. And yeah. But like before, they they didn't really care, right? Yeah, I guess it's more on people's radars now. And just anecdotally, I think I've seen more studios open up in, in Germany and Europe in general in the past five years. So I think it's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better, but still it takes um, more effort from politics, um, from politicians yeah. uh, to do a better job. It's, it's kind of annoying that all the time, you know, um, you have to convince people that this is something uh, you know positive beneficial for everybody and you know like for instance uh, movies they get funded in germany and it's considered to be you know like um, it, it's something seen something cultural and it's an yeah. art form and for cartoons for animation for game art we are not there yet and i i think you were also you went also to the uh to the museum in in new york um the metropolitan museum of art exactly and yeah that was actually the first time where somebody who worked there was um, you know, I had we had a conversation, and that was the first time, actually, somebody who was into um, fine arts, classic art forms, that he was saying um, he considers game art as like being art, and yeah. what all the other people are saying it's not true. You know, like there's some conservative people who are saying, yeah, um, it's not really art, but. Um, yeah i don't i don't understand that viewpoint at all uh, why are you gatekeeping like how are movies art and books but video games aren't doesn't make any sense to me and the the whole debate is a little nonsensical of course <laughs> games are art True. It's just in interactive yeah it's just the mindset i think of uh, we could say maybe it's the old people <laughs> the older generation yeah. at least that they are stuck in their idea of uh, that's the only way that's how art needs to be and yeah um well yeah it's it's nonsense um when you do art and especially the one that we are looking at in the background right now like what are the things that are inspiring you the most? Like, um, is there something, is there a process behind how you get inspired or how you start a project? Can you more elaborate on that? Well, I'll, it depends a bit for this one and many client pieces. I usually do like a pretty finished sketch that I try to time box it won't take me longer than two hours and I try to solve every problem with the sketch and then kind of present that as that would be the final piece it's just in black and white so the client sees what I what I'm gonna do in the final and then hopefully execute it better than the sketch <laughs> uh, but for my personal stuff it's I have these ideas in my head that stay there sometimes for months and then I start messing around in 3d now and see if it works and leave it for a month and then come back again and i'm really inspired by cinematography lately and books more than more than other paintings or concept art recently it's just, i've been looking at a lot of different cinematographers and learning about that and how they shoot their movies and and how they light their scenes uh, especially the, the games we do at Remedy, they are quite cinematic. So it's really useful to know how movies actually do stuff. Especially now when, when we can do so much more in real time in video games with the current 
technology. Yes, like, is there... So sometimes it's just a picture you see or that you have researched and based on that reference you start a piece? Yeah, I might have some references that have a lighting that I'm looking for and then other references that have textures and shapes that I like and then kind of combining all of this into one image is is what I try to do. Okay. Yeah, that's um, I think the same um, pro approach that I have. Um, like mostly it, it can really be a picture or something that um, sparks an idea. Uh, or, you know, is maybe it starts in my head and then from there it it uh, evolves into something different. Um, are you still, because you're so 3D heavy, as you said in the beginning, and your process is really um, quite, um, you know, um, I mean, your art is very cinematic and you could see sometimes, uh, you know, the 3D in it. How's your your process before? Like, are you still doing like thumbnails or you just jump in and blocking out 3D shapes and then you arrange it and you know you do it in, in 3d already like how, what how is it how do you deal with this like all well these now if i get a brief for, from my art director or someone it's just i usually assemble something with gray boxes just get the composition going and in blender usually and then i have the scene with gray boxes and a couple of maquettes and then that's like that's the composition and then we can discuss if it solves the problem or not and then it's pretty easy to start the image from there i don't usually do, do a 2d sketch anymore it's so fast in 3d it's just throw stuff around and, and do a simple block out but this process that's on the background it's still i still work in that way i would probably take it further in 3d now this image maybe 50% 3D and then do the rest in Photoshop. But as I said, it's a lot of organic stuff. I wouldn't do all of that in 3D. As I did the statue and the city, which makes sense to do in 3D. But it all depends on the image. But most of the stuff is, most of the time, it's, it's mostly 3D. I see. Like, if you need to do fast iterations, is it still um, does it still work out for you in when you're so you know um, much doing off the process in in 3D, or do you feel like it can be also sometimes um, like a, an obstacle to have yeah. more output or um, what? Like from my point of view of what I have the issue with um, when I use 3D and I use 3D a lot and I like using 3D but when I start a project my issue is that when it's something already there with in a high amount of detail and um, I'm I'm really afraid of touching it I'm really afraid yeah, of you doing get... over paints and it I'm very hesitant yeah. uh, hesitant yeah. so. 3D is really tricky man I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been doing a lot of a lot of finished images lately and it's it's so easy to get stuck fixing the 3D. It's super fast I think these days with GPU rendering and all the all the new fancy stuff. It's fairly fast to get it to like 70%, but then the last 30% that can take forever. So it's really tricky to know when to stop the 3D and take it to Photoshop because a good photo always trumps any 3D that you're gonna do. <laughs> so sometimes I spend like half a day trying to get something right in 3D and then take it to Photoshop and just like completely cover it with photos and it works a million times better than I kind of wasted half a day there. So it's 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 a tough balance to hit. Sometimes it's 3D works so well that I don't have to put any photos in there. It's just done so okay and i do like how easy it is you know say a painting and then your art director wants to see what's behind the camera or a different angle or a different lighting scenario i can just go in my scene and 
do 10 minutes of changes and another render and then that's it. I can do like 15 different uh, options out of the same environment without much trouble. So it's the efficiency comes later on in the pipeline when you have some stuff built up. Mm, true. Do you... Yeah, I, I was trying to, 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 you know, still try to keep my traditional process alive somehow to do yeah. the thumbnails and all that. Because I just enjoy it. It's there's yeah. there are no obstacles. I should do it more too. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's very simple, right? If you just work with shapes and. Um, you know you're trying to find a composition but at the same time maybe it can be that something is not 100% correct in your perspective and later on you figure out oh that design totally does not work in perspective or yep. at yeah. least in yep. this 3D. camera yeah. angle yeah so I think yeah it's pretty good to keep it more organic and um, yeah to, 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 to be good at in you know the best of both worlds is like I think that's that's the goal yeah, yeah to get the get the good stuff out of 3d but not get bogged down with the technical that's that's what I'm always looking for when I'm seeing if I want to learn new software or if I if I should learn a new tool is where does it fit like I have this is kind of this scale of like doing the models in CAD, like the quality is super, super nice, but then it's really slow. But on the other hand, doing stuff in 3D code, the quality is not the greatest, but it's super fast. So trying to hit this perfect balance of speed and quality in 3D to get the best out of it, that's that's the tricky thing. That's why I'm always looking for new tools to get better quality faster, if it makes sense to you, you know. 3D code is awesome. It's like it's my Swiss Army knife of 3D. You can force anything out of it, but it's not always the most elegant solution. Yeah, yeah, I me too. But <laughs> there, as you said, there is sometimes that things not working or you know, yeah, it can be, be a pain, in, pain yeah. in the ass. Yeah, but it's also amazing. So. <laughs> So how was it for you working on you? We worked together. If people don't know, we worked together on models Phoenix Rising. And yep. for my part, it was something completely different. What I'm used to do, um, like before, I used to do more realistic or uh, yeah, still painterly things here and there. And I have variety of different things um, in my portfolio where from photo bash to more painterly things sketches but yeah. also more yeah more realistic things but doing a models phoenix rising was kind of different for me because that was the ratio between 3d and painting uh was different so there was yeah. definitely more i spent way more time in painting and trying to achieve this painterly look um i followed the art direction than uh, using 3D. How was it for you? Like, because as we can see, your work is very cinematic and photorealistic. And yeah. Uh, well, actually, I was originally hired there to work on a different project, so it was definitely an adjustment for me, but not entirely, not a negative one at all, since. I've always thought that it would be fun at some point in my career to work on something more stylized, something that has, you can play with the shapes more and it's more colorful. So in that sense, Immortals was the perfect project, but it was definitely an adjustment for me since my portfolio was so realistic and, and full of dark images and, and <laughs> <laughs> different monochromatic subjects and, yeah, monochromatic totally yeah. yeah cinematic things so but it was it was fun uh, in the end i didn't have to change my process that much it was still quite 3d heavy i just uh stylized the shapes more and used way more color and and did 2d more stylization in the 2d phase 
if that makes sense. So I I had a lot of fun working on that project. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of a challenge as well. Like even you know for me it was a challenge to do something different and to approach it in a different way. I still also use 3D, but as I said, it was way more the ratio between those two processes was uh, was different. Did you did you ever? I mean, for us, where and for me as well, we were supposed to work on different projects, and our style was we were matching a different style and another project, and then we got onto this one. Um, yeah. Is there anything? Uh, that you you've learned from that would you any advice you would give to the audience to people um, getting well, into the industry like because the question yeah. is do you want to go one direction and only be yeah. the photorealistic cinematic guy yeah or, or try other, to do yeah stylized cartoony stuff or do you think like for me I have stuff that is both now um, yeah what do you think what is the best uh The best way or what should you do yeah that's that's tricky i think all of it comes down to drawing skill you know pen on pen on paper you know it's making nice looking shapes whether it be in 3d or using photos or it all comes down to the basic basic skill of making nice looking shapes that said uh it's definitely good to specialize and to do one thing well but for example your portfolio is pretty cool since you can do the painterly stuff really well and then also the realistic stuff yeah but so, like if, my issue is <laughs> why i'm asking this question is that yeah. i feel i'm i'm not even having a style like I, but, I'm, yeah, like that that's a strange style yeah like it's a strength. I, yeah i i used to struggle with this i this question of if 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 i have my own style or or how to develop your own style but the longer i've done this i've realized that uh you just need to need to do what you think is cool copy the people that you think are doing work that you want to do that you think is great and it, from the all of your influences filter through your head whatever comes out it it'll end up looking like you and that that will be your style so maybe instead of focusing on what's your style focus on what you're interested in and what you think is super cool and what you want to do what you really want to make and out of that after doing years of that their their style will will happen yeah i i think that apply to my previous portfolio pieces I've done like I, I I'm we constantly learning right and we are still looking at tutorials and new tools out yeah. there and but when I do other things like that project now I have totally you know different um, portfolio pieces in my uh, different work in my portfolio yeah i'm i'm that. looking at it and i'm like this is not you know um how do you say cohesive like it's it's yeah. not like linear one thing it looks like i do many different things and i know i'm i'm i can't pull this off i can do that the question is just uh that also many of our friends are having sometimes that hey what should i do or people approach me and say like should i go just one direction and yeah do this one thing for the realistic stuff i or should i do both to maximize my opportunities to find it yeah. yeah to find a job right so yeah that's a tough one uh there's definitely a market for everything i don't say that everything needs to look photo real or be realistic there's a market for stylized stuff that i certainly can do you know The, all the League, League of Legends stuff and all the all that stuff that's amazing, but I'm not personally interested in, in making that stuff. So that's that's where I just leave that stuff to the people that are super into that, and I do something else. So 
in that case, maybe if you're starting out, uh, try to pick a couple of studios that you'd like to ideally work for and see what the people there are doing, what their portfolios are like and, and try to aim for that. Maybe that makes sense. Yeah, I think so too. Like, especially in the beginning. Um, yeah. When you try to get it's, into it, one... You know, to I think to it's it, quite so. impossible to be excellent at everything. You can be good at a lot of things, but being really good at everything, it's, just, it's super hard. Yeah, I, I see it the same way. I, I think uh, that's that's the ultimate truth but there are some exceptions <laughs> I don't know yeah, like there. some people are really killing it and I don't yeah. know how they do it but um, my previous guest for instance um, Jan Vespecher he's, he's a friend of mine as well uh, we used to work together and I know him um, you know back then when we used to um, you know when I used to live in Germany and He's really good in environment art and character art. And I'm not saying like he's, he's, uh, well, if I would be a character artist, maybe I could see, yeah, this is off or not perfect. And you still do mistakes. We all do mistakes all the time, even though we are maybe specialized doing environment yeah. art or character art. But um, I, w I would say he, he's really good in both. And, not talking about other people out there you know who are um crazy talented and can do can be good in design and environment art or character art at the same time yeah it's it's definitely possible it's just when you work in this field you get so used to putting people into boxes and i guess the studios get used to that as well so if you're an environment guy you're always an environment guy and you never get to do characters and then you're never improving making characters and then then you, it's just it's this self-reinforcing cycle that you end up doing the same kind of things yes yeah. but i mean there's still there's generalist um job positions out there where they look yeah for, for sure. sure and the smaller the studio the more general the job is uh, when I used to work in, in these studios, I did characters and, and environments, like all of it. Hmm. Yeah. The triple A seems to seems to want to. Oh, that's very ha have per specialist people that do just one small slice of of the game. True. Yeah, that if you're a good concept designer, that doesn't mean uh, when you're good at doing vehicles that you can also do a good you know be a good weapon artist or whatever it can be so specialized that you really have people yeah. doing just weapons or just vehicles or props or you know whatever it is and that's pretty much mostly yeah in triple a productions because they need really somebody who's really good at this one thing. are really good at yeah yeah that but now that we are talking about this it reminds me that we should practice doing some of that stuff on our own time pick like personal projects that you need to do a couple of characters for or you need to design maybe vehicles if you don't do those that often or something like that it at least for me it seems to be that the longer i do this the ideas that I have for my personal work, they always are pretty much in the same skill set that I've used before. And I kind of need to force myself uh, out of my comfort zone. For example, now I'm doing this project that demands much more hard surface modeling than I've done previously. So I need to need to learn some of that. I think that the, the best way to learn new things is do a project uh, project-based learning i've i've never seen the usefulness of going opening a software and you know starting going tool by tool learning what they do i i usually just pick a project i need to do okay i need this tool 
and I learn what I need to as I go. You know, you only use like 20% of the software you use, so no need to learn all of it. Yeah. Is there right now? Are you still doing work for your own? Like yeah, at night? I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of in a pickle now since I don't really have a proper Octane machine at home because I can't get NVIDIA 3080s anywhere. Do... <laughs> They are sold out everywhere. Yeah. So c currently I'm not doing that much at home, but I'm, I'm planning to buy a new PC the start of next year. Okay. So it's, it's really... Um you can be really dependent on one software as well where you feel like okay i could do something but it's not yeah maybe it does not have the quality or yeah now that i'm used to working in octane i don't want to go work anywhere else work with any other rendering engine i just feel so at home with with octane and it's a gpu renderer just that only works with nvidia CUDA GPUs so it's it's tricky that trying to choose the tools that are best for you and, and stuff keeps changing so fast now the GPU rendering is a relatively new thing and it's it's changing all the time and getting better but it also means that you have to keep buying new hardware like every couple of years Yeah, but uh, do you think like for a concept artist like we are, um, it's really that, you know, important, so critical to have the most recent kind of hardware to get along? Like when it comes to Octane, well, sometimes I ask myself like, um, well, I could buy like so many, you know, s such such an awesome workstation, but it does it. Does it make any sense there, like, uh, to invest so much money into in, into something? How much is well? How much do you benefit well, from doing that in the end? Is it really worth yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, for me, it, it's totally worth it. If it comes down to is how easy the creative process is. It's how how much you have to deal with the technical stuff like waiting for something to render or waiting for a shader to calculate or waiting for things to happen. It's, it slows down your creative process and thinking. It's the more fluid you can make the process, the better it is. So it, in that sense, it's super worth it for me to invest in the gear a little bit to get the, the process as smooth it, as it can be because I'll end up making more art and it's more fun but that said not everyone has maybe all the cash needed to invest in that so luckily there's there's other stuff now there's Blender that's completely free and you can just use cycles it's not It's not maybe quite as fast as Octane, but it definitely gets the job done. You can you can work with it. Gotcha. So there's there's a tool for everyone out there. I just recommend people try different, especially different rendering engines and 3D software. Because Blender was the only the first like 3D software that really clicked for me, and I enjoyed working in it when 2.8 update came out last year or a couple of years ago or something like that hmm. do you i know you started as one of the first ones um who were using blender with octane together like yeah uh, are you still using it and what are your thoughts on that was when i tried to figure yeah. it out it was not um, perfect yet it was very early in the development of, yeah. of Octane for Blender, but uh, things I started using it. I I think it was still in beta when I when I started using it with Blender and it was definitely a bit bit touch and go there for a bit. But uh, nowadays it's great. It's super stable. It's really fast and it's free. And it's free. Oh it's it's crazy. It's 
absolutely crazy that as far as you as long as you only have one gpu it's free so that that's also what one reason why i started using blender and octane because i i switched studios and i always had to learn new stuff new software because different studios use different things and have licenses for different stuff and i got tired of it so i've so you had to wait for what, get to get licenses yeah, for a certain yeah, type I, of uh, software or you need to create a jira ticket with a request yeah. for it to, <laughs> yeah, to get then wait, wait around it yeah i just started to think what if there's a pipeline that i don't have to change if i change studios you know and then blender is free and octane is free and it's, let's try those together and it seemed to work pretty well yeah i think this makes a lot of sense um to stick to just one and um especially one that is free where you don't have yeah. to cope with all these things these issues when you start uh, at a new company um, yeah i i'm a believer in trying to learn a couple of tools well and not switch like every three months when a new cool toy comes out uh, you see this is my issue that comes yeah. now we come to my next question because um well i don't want to miss out on something and i always try to be on top of my game learning new tools and a lot of people are out there as well yep. but you can really get stuck in the process of learning new tools yeah and there was a point where i was just learning new tools all the time at night instead of yeah. working on my projects and my portfolio and exactly i know exactly how you feel i was in that horrible. same boat and, and you feel like Oh, you also feel kind of uh, because of social media that that's the next topic but we saw because of social media you feel this kind of pressure that that at least I have that I I miss something well I'm not yeah like and there's this, all these this awesome stuff. people learning new stuff all the time I'm coming up with these awesome things yeah I know how it feels and I love learning new things that let me do new stuff let me do uh, cloth simulation or or water simulations or whatever it might be it's super super nice feeling when you can do something new that looks super cool and it's great but at the same time uh, if i think you need to have this this solid solid core of your pipeline that you stick to and you learn pretty well and then you can add stuff around it that complements it i i use marvelous designer here and there to to uh simulate clothing and stuff but i'm no no expert in it and it'll at this space it'll take me years to learn it properly but i get what i need out of it but i just use it for one thing so and you keep forgetting I, like yeah when you yeah, switch you do. like what happens to me is like okay one day i use grease pencil then for some other projects maybe it does not make sense so much yeah. And I, for especially now for uh, the recent project, um, I was using 3D Code and Octane, but then I didn't use um, Blender that much. And yeah. there was also time before where I just learned it in my free time. Yeah. So I was not using it for a while. And then I got back to Blender for another thing. And dude, man, I had to relearn some stuff I've learned already. There was an update for Blender hot yeah, keys have they changed switch something yeah and it's so frustrating so uh yeah i think i'm at that point uh as you said where i just stick to my most used tools and try to to get yeah. better in this instead of switching all the time and only if it yeah. really makes sense yeah i just caught myself last last week i noticed that the red shift is out on on blender i was like man i probably should try that but then I caught myself like, man, that's, I'm not going to do it until someone tells me that it's super awesome. I, I'm going to keep using what I use. Yeah, I think the benefit you get out of it needs to be so huge. It needs to be so huge. Big. Yeah, yeah it, it's it, it, like for little things, I think it makes no sense to switch all the time or to figure something yeah. out and to try it out. I think it's fine. 
Yeah. But if you feel it's not click, it does not click for you, it does not work yeah. out for you, then you know just stick to. Uh, and I can can't emphasize it more that you need to find the stuff that actually clicks for you and not just what your favorite person is using, because I just I could never get into C++ for example. It's just I used it for quite a long time, but it's always a pain, and it. it Back then it was like I wouldn't use it for two weeks and I completely forgot how it, yeah. how it works. Oh, it's course. like somehow an alien language. It's it's so different from everything else that it's um, one of the best tools ever, but I just can't bring myself to using it on a daily basis. I think it becomes some sort of a, we say that, sort of a trend. You yeah. know, people want to become you know maybe trendsetters or something where they uh, sh want to show off with the newest tool and the newest process and it distracts you actually from the uh, from the real goal but yeah um, the real goal is to make images and make the images that you want to make exactly so. yeah no that's totally true so how do you think about social media like something especially during this pandemic um, mm. it, it's kind of obvious to me that I really get lost in this vicious cycle of checking what people are doing out there and more than before mm. I, I feel like I'm really it soaks me in and it's really blurring my vision what actually um, you know the final goal actually is like at a certain point I was trying to chase those likes yeah and just trying to put work out there but I was not yeah. really convinced by the quality of the work and sometimes maybe later I took it off the internet again um, how do you how do you deal with uh, social media especially like I remember I was never like I hated Facebook like when everybody was into Facebook almost telling me about certain events or challenges or back then when I was starting out I was never really informed by workshops or events so that was actually the only reason why I joined Facebook to to uh, keep up with what people are doing but now it became this thing where it's really a lot of distraction and where just back then just a, a piece that I you saw an artwork that inspired you could really inspire you to spark to uh, you know to it could really start uh, an idea for you it could inspire you to do your own work now it turned into this thing where I get distracted I get disencouraged because the amount I see the, the amount of work I see out there is so much and there's so yeah. much great stuff that yep. I, I cannot filter anymore um, the quality is super high yeah I know what you mean it's whenever you go to art station it's there's amazing stuff there every day it f starts to feel like oh these people are achieving so much uh, uh, so in so short of a time but I've been thinking about it and it's probably a little bit of an illusion since there's so many good people out there and if those people make a couple of pieces a year and post them suddenly there's there's like awesome stuff every week on the internet it, and it feels you know it feels that people are posting more than they might in reality be you know so yeah it's 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 a tough tough thing to balance i I try not to pay too much attention to the concept concept art uh, social media these days. I try to follow more photographers and cinematographers and and people of that sort to maybe broaden the inspiration pool a little bit. Uh, but but it's still 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 always when someone posts something super awesome art, it's like man, damn that guy, <laughs> and then 
quickly it turns into well what can i learn from that and i want to do something with with that technical thing or this idea or something it's inspiring in the end but it's tricky not to get discouraged yeah the the truth is that we as human beings we cannot adapt to all this information i think we're very simple creatures and yeah. the input we get nowadays from all these different sources is so much that it somehow um is not it's not the the total truth or it's kind of it's just a a, a little piece of what is actually out there so because what happens of course is that you ultimately only follow the artist you admire and those are the most talented or more skilled artists out there so if you see people uh, all the time working on great projects uh, working uh, you know at ILM working for Marvel and all these guys and you are like wow like what have I done the recent 10 years like you yeah. look at your projects and you're like wow like th there's not much so much going on because you see all the artists at the same time you don't look at one artist in specific yeah. and what he's putting yeah. out there um, yeah. over the years and what he has done you're looking at the hundreds of people that work in the industry at the same time and exactly and also it's different for freelancers that work on a project for a couple of months or even a couple of weeks and then move on to something else and when you work as a staff concept artist at the studio you might work on one game for five years and then that's it so yeah. it's it's different in that way so maybe we should uh, change our behavior and stop following people on social media <laughs> yeah or yeah the the people who are not as good as we are in <laughs> art yet so we will feel better <laughs> is that the solution <laughs> i'm not sure that's uh i, I think uh, i don't know uh, during these 15 years i think i've learned to live with the feeling that i don't know what the hell i'm doing ever and there's always someone that's so much better than i am uh, it's just something that comes with the territory I'm, I'm sure that the people that I look up to they also feel like that when they go online it's just it comes with the territory yeah I think the the pressure for people who are very professional and already on the top yeah um, you know are the ones who are considered to be the best concept artist out there i think for them as well it's not so easy i think keeping no. up with other people's yeah. work and having this pressure like oh i need to deliver and there's so many other professional skilled artists out there that they could just yeah. you know um be better than me at a certain point i think that's something that can be also psychological pressure yeah. for somebody and some people they suffer from depression and other things right yeah I, i'm sure it's it's tough it's also great to see like young young people just get so good so quickly now it's it's we need to keep up <laughs> i guess it's oh, we are old we're getting yeah. old man yeah how old are you now if I uh, I'm 32 <laughs> 32 that's not yeah. old <laughs> that's not old so yeah do you have any future projects you want to talk about before we well unfortunately I can't talk about any of future projects they are extremely no, private cool projects, not, <laughs> <laughs> not from work yeah uh, I have some some pieces coming up uh, but nothing I've I've been doing a couple more but th this couple of pieces World War One pieces 
that I enjoyed. I'm working on a couple more and and next year hopefully doing something something that's maybe includes a little bit of motion even. Let's see. Do you have any other goals for your career? Like um, right now you're a senior concept artist and that's something of course you enjoy uh, yeah. doing but is there something you are working like a final goal you you're working towards mm -hmm. or anything you try to pursue well currently i'm extremely happy at, at remedy it's, uh, it's it's been super fun working there for the past year the, the projects are uh, really great and the people are people are really awesome as well although it's been a bit difficult to get to know people during this this world situation that we are in with a lot of people working remote so i don't see myself leaving the studio anytime soon but uh on the technical side i'd like to get more into animation and hard surface modeling and more of that stuff in 2021 let's see how it works out yeah that's pretty cool do you would you also pursue um something like anything else in a different field like uh, becoming an art director at a certain point or um i, I know you also have experience uh, working for the movie industry is there yeah. something else you would try to you know focus more on when it comes to skills yeah. or anything definitely art direction interests me in, at some point currently i'm still super happy doing doing the doing the actual concept design design work but in the future art direction is definitely something i would would consider and doing more movie and animation related stuff would be cool as well probably more from a freelance freelance basis than working in a studio but let's see that sounds exciting Johanny time is almost over I'm so glad you made it and you found the time to join me for my yeah for my channel um, I hope we it talk soon fun. again yeah like it was my pleasure and um, I will put all the links uh, in these descriptions down below uh, so people can connect with you um, can share that later with me and yeah I hope we'll get to talk to each other next time again yeah let's do this again sometime all right have a good one bye bye you too bye